Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to look at a simple way to make an enemy patrol between multiple locations. So this is not going to use a nav mesh, that would be more advanced and I'm more than happy to show a demonstration of that in a separate video. This is simply going to use collisions to determine when a point has been reached and then what point should then be traveled to. So all I've done so far is I created a plane and I've taken the camera and angled it down to look at the plane. So let's go ahead and three, uh, create our three points so game object create empty and we'll call this point a its exact position does not matter but we'll put it at like negative three all the y positions do matter that will be zero and then the z position again really doesn't matter we'll put that at like four okay so that's the first position all we need to add is physics box collider, set it to a trigger, and you're done. We just want to be able to detect if a collision has occurred. So location and collision, that's all we care about. So now we copy, paste, change this one to point C, uh, B, excuse me. I can't, uh, apparently I don't know the alphabet. We just move it to a different position. I'm making it diagonal so it's readily obvious that the character is facing the correct direction. And we've changed this one to point C. And again, we'll move it in a diagonal uh, position. That way it's obvious to tell that it's moving correctly and facing correctly. Okay, so we have our three points, and now let's look at the enemy that's going to travel. You can use whatever you want. I tend to use cubes and circles and orbs and things like that, but since we want to make sure it's facing the right direction, I actually used a character that I purchased from the Unity Store, so we'll just drag and drop this into the scene. You can use whatever character you want. It's just I want to impress that upon you because very often people ask me to share the resources. A, I cannot share this one because it's purchased from the store. I don't have the right to redistribute it. Uh, and B, it doesn't matter. You can use whatever model you want. So first thing we do, we're going to position this object on point A. So negative three, zero, four. So negative three, zero, four. Now let's take a look at what components are on that object. So transform component, of course, because it has a position. Animator. So this character comes with animations. This has no impact on the functionality. Yes, it has a walk cycle, but the walk cycle does not actually face it in the right direction or project it forward. So don't let the animation disturb you. Don't let the animation distract you. This has no impact on the facing or the movement. Capsule Collider, it comes with a Capsule Collider. I set it to a trigger because we don't want it, uh, again, just like the boxes, we don't want anything bouncing or uh, uh, we want the collisions to not be solid collisions. And then we have the rigid body so we can give it velocity, shut off gravity because we don't want it traveling through the floor. And then I created a script and dragged it and drop it here. So it's just right click, create C sharp, you name it, and then you simply grab the script and drag and drop it. So those are all the components that are on the robot. So the rest of what needs to be done is the coding. So point A, point B, point C obviously correspond to point A, B, and C. So you're just going to drag and drop those. And in just a minute, we're going to review how you create these variables. Okay, so now let's open up that script. So public transform point A, point B, point C. So by making it public, that's what makes it accessible in the inspector. We want it to be a transform type because we care about the location, the vector three, and then we're just naming it. This private string path status D. This is going to let us determine, since there are going to be three points, 
the the way the robot acts when it gets to the middle point is going to be determined as to whether or not it's coming from point A or point C. So I simply want a string to keep a check on that. So you can make this be any two values that you want. I'm using D for down and then U for up. You could use A and C to indicate it's coming from A or it's coming from C, whatever you want. It's just having two values and then changing those values depending on which point it's traveling from. So in the start section, this happens when the object is first instantiated. So when the rob robot is first instantiated, we want this to happen. So get component transform look at point B. This does exactly what it says it does. Your object that the script is attached to is going to look at whatever object is in parentheses. So look at point B. No further explanation needed. That is exactly what it does. The only thing that I will mention, though, is that every object has a front. So when it says look at, it means it is taking the front of the object and aligning it, facing it with that object. Get component rigid body velocity transform forward times two. So the times two is simply a speed multiplier. So one of the best things that I think Unity ever did was probably getting these two lines to work so well together, because think about what it's doing. It's saying look at that direction and then travel in that direction because that's what forward is. Again, forward is looking at, uh, it's concerning whatever the front of the object is, whatever you know side is considered the front, and move in that direction. So you don't have to know, is it negative X, positive Y, negative Z? You don't have to know. It's just going to move forward. So face the object in a certain direction, move the object in that direction that easy. And you're just going to see these two lines repeated again and again with this one tossed in a couple times as well to make sure we track which direction it's traveling in. Now it's just a matter of looking for collisions. So void on trigger enter collider other. So we want to detect when there's a collision with another object. If that object name is point one, actually, sorry, it should be point A. I did point one in another version and I realized it was confusing. So if the other object, if their name is point A, then look at point B, travel forward and set this to D. Now you're probably saying, didn't we already do that? Yes, we did because it starts at point one. So this isn't going to happen right away. This is only going to happen on the return trip. So this is really the, um, the default state at the beginning of the scene. However, if other object dot name is point B, again, my apologies, in an earlier iteration, I was using point one, two, and three. So if the object, uh, if the name of the object that is being collided with is point B, if the path status is D, remember we set that at the beginning, indicating that it's coming from up and it's traveling down, then look at point C, and again, travel forward. There's probably a, a simple way to consolidate this so you don't have to keep saying transform forward. However, like I said, in my initial, when I initially do functionality, new functionality, I'm not worried about optimization. I'm worried about clarity. Is it obvious what's happened? Yes, we're looking at a position and we're traveling forward towards that position. So there is probably a way to easily consolidate these transform forwards since it's always the same thing. But I'm not worried about that because, again, we're not looking at optimization. OK, so colliding with point B, if this variable is equal to that, then travel towards point C. Else, if it's not equal to that, then travel towards point A. Because, again, the same lines of code with just one difference. Are you looking at point C? Or are you looking at point A? So it looks a little bit messy as far as how much code you're using, but it's really, again, those two lines over and over and over again. Look at, move towards. Look at, move towards. It's the same idea. Just repeat it. If other.name is equal to point 0.3, so now we've, cons now we've collided with point 0.3, and we don't want 3. Sorry, that should be point C. So if the other name is point C, then we finally change this. Now we're saying that we're traveling up. And again, get component transform. This time we're looking back at B. And we're again using that same speed. So probably my guess is this line could be taken out of all the ifs and put it at the very end. Because regardless of the collision, we want it to be moving in that direction.
So you probably could do that, but for the purposes of this, like I said, I like when code is very easy, that it's very easy to understand what you're doing. You're looking at an object and you're moving towards the object. So like I said, the only, the only issue, and we've already addressed it, is that depending on where you want them to go when they hit that middle point, are they coming from point A or are they coming from point C? You've already checked for that. And if I have not forgotten anything, that's it. That will make this work. So let's see if I messed anything up. So he's traveling. And again, I chose the diagonal direction. He's traveling. I chose the di diagonal direction again because it makes it obvious. And there we go. So it is... It knows whether it's traveling down or if it's traveling up. And again, like I said, for the status, you can use whatever you want. You could use A and C to indicate where it's coming from or where it's going to. Again, I just use U and D for up and down. And just like that, you have created an enemy pathing. So as I mentioned, if you want to see a tutorial for NavMesh, I can do a separate one of those. Just leave a comment and let me know that you'd like to see that. But this is really kind of introductory. This is meant to be simple. This isn't really using any new functionality that you're probably not familiar with. It's just looking at an object and traveling in that direction. So I think that should about do it. Actually, let's do one more thing. Say you want to not do this, okay? Say you always want him to travel to C and then from C to A. So what you could do instead, you wouldn't even have to check for D. Let's see if I can do this really quick. So All right, so this is saying if you collide with B, travel towards C, and say when you collide with C, you instead want to go to A, so you want a circular route, then you would do that. I think that's all I had to change. So now, rather than bouncing back to B, he will bounce to A and do a circular route. I just chose the other one first because that was slightly more complicated. There you go. So you at that point, you don't need to check for that extra variable because whenever they collide, they're only doing one thing. There's no decision to be made that they're just going to do this. Okay, so now that should do it. So yes, if you want to see a nav mess, just let me know, leave a comment, leave a like, and please enjoy the rest of your day.